message for the participation. Um, I'd like to lock mine in at 4%. Can that be done, Chris? I believe so. Let's pull the account all the way up so I can get a look inside and take that and see what you see. I'm going to grab your last name and the company that you're working for. Uh, Pella Corporation and family crest name is Vicente. Hey, man, I get your date of birth, please. I put that in already. October 1980, October 7th. That's a Tuesday at 0020 in the morning. Thank you. All right, I think I located your profile. What were the months and years that you started with the company? Um, last month on the 28th. Thank you. I'm sorry, what's the name of the company again? Pella. There it is. Okay, gotcha. All right, we are in. Thank you so much. Uh, this is our first time talking with you here, so we do just need to confirm a few more extra pieces before it lets me get all the way in there. Are you still living off 205 South Randolph Street, number 146 in Mincom, Illinois, 61445? Or Post Office Box 146. Okay. Yeah, it shows number 146. You may need to have HR update that for you if that's going to cause any mail problems for you. Huh. I, I, I uh, did it through the portal. Gotcha. Okay. And can I grab your phone number? 309-997-0878. A good email address for you. Uh, v as in Victor, India, Charlie, Echo, November, Tango, Echo, Juliet, Romeo, dot Juliet, Unicorn, Alpha, November, at gmail.com. Okay, sir, and do you like getting the statements mailed to you, or would you prefer to have everything be emailed to you and go pay for this? Can you do both? Oh, yeah, we can leave everything as is right now, so you should get a little bit of each. Um, what do you mean a little bit of each? Or what, what would be emailed and what would be mailed? Good question. So I can pull it up for you and let you know the way that it's currently laid out. Loaded one over here. Okay. All right, so it looks like currently Account statements and transaction notices would be mailed. Regulatory notices and general plan related information would be emailed. Alright. Couldn't have both. Well, I mean, obviously, certain things don't want to. Let, leave it as is. Gotcha. Alright. There we go. That's complete. And then you were looking, you said, to have. 4%, is that correct? Yep, lock it in at 4%. And were you wanting to do that as the standard pre-tax contribution or for tax or, or after tax, the Roth contribution? After. All right, so we're gonna be doing the 4% in Roth contributions to the 401k for you today. Yes. Now, we do have a program, it just wants to confirm real quick, did you wanna have this automatically increase annually every year or did you want to go ahead and have it where you would adjust it manually lock it in at four because i'll never increase it okay there we go so we just want to confirm some information real quick and we'll be all set here we're electing to change our contribution rate in our roth 401k from zero percent to four percent this change gets communicated to the employer on june 10th and typically takes one to two payroll cycles to go into effect we're opting out of any automatic savings adjustment programs. Are those changes correct? Yep. Got it. All right, we will send a confirmation letter to you on the following business day. Perfect, sir. I've gone ahead and got that change submitted for you. How else can I assist today? Um, I think at this point that would be all I can really do now. <laughs> I'm, I'm still kind of new. At uh, Last time I had a 401k, Roth was uh, with AT&T, and that was back in... 2008 to 2011 so um, yeah I'm probably not gonna I'm just gonna leave it however it is or just leave it gotcha. it just 
so I can confirm though. Uh, it looked like the company had it as 8% for the regular 401k contribution. Did you want to leave that 8% or did you just want the 4% in the Roth only? Yep. Just the 4% to Roth, that's it. Okay, perfect. 4% in the Roth. There we go. So we're going to change the employer 401k contribution to zero. So we've made that change for you here. So we're no longer putting into the uh, salary deferral. We are just doing the 4% into the Roth portion only. Perfect. And I don't have to call up regularly to, to make sure it stays that way, though I might. Yeah, the only time changes will be made is if you'd receive any notifications about them. But we did go ahead and submit to have this changed for you to where... You're just going to have 4% Roth going in and no percentage going in on the uh, pre-tax portion. Perfect. All right, and let's see here. If you could give me just a moment, though, I do want to confirm something real quick. Are you familiar with the company Match? Um, no. No? Uh, uh, the, I look. Pella did say that they'd match up to 4%, but they weren't specific as... 401k pre or Roth so I mean it's, it, if if Pelotas because AT&T did the same thing was they would match 4% so if the match doesn't apply to the Roth that's fine if it only applies okay. it to, looks like it doesn't okay that, that's fine alright so well, yeah, well, hold like on got those changes made so let me see. Pella will do four percent to the tax deferred portion, but That's not. What I can see here, yes. Not the Roth, which is after tax. From what I can see here, correct. Wow. Okay. Um. I, I jumping into these um. Tidbits of uh, details. What sort of tax penalties and all that go into the 401k tax deferred? So for the tax deferred account, whenever whenever Pella pays you, they'll get the amount that you're owed. They'll take it, put your 401k portion in. Then they pay taxes and pay you the remainder. So whenever you go to take this money out, it's pre-tax, right? So whenever you go to take the funds out, you're going to be paying the taxes when the money comes out of the plan. That also includes any growth that the money had while it was in there. If you take that money out before you're at retirement age 59 and a half, then you'd be subject to a 10% early withdrawal penalty as well. Now, for the Roth portions, the after-tax funds, to just like it sounds, right? Pella gets all the money that you're owed. First, they pay taxes. Then they move money into the 401k. Then you get the remainder. So the money that went into the 401k has had taxes paid on it. So as long as it's in the account for at least five years, and you wait till you're 59 and a half to take it out, you don't have to pay any additional taxes on the earnings for the growth that was in the account. Let's do it 4-4. Um, four, four. You got it. So we'll do 4% Roth and 4% to the uh, standard pre-tax. All right. So just that same script we went through just a moment ago here. It just wants to confirm. We've elected to make changes in our 401k. We've turned our salary deferral pre-tax from 8% to 4%. This change gets communicated to the employer on June 10th, and typically will take one to two payroll cycles to go into effect. We changed the rate in the Roth 401k from 0% to 4%. This change will be communicated to the employer on June 10th, and typically takes one to two payroll cycles to go into effect. We opted out of any automatic saving adjustment programs. Perfect. And so that, I just, I just I'm hoping that I'm not irritating you with this question, but I just want to make sure that it locks it 
at four percent and if there's any to be any changes to it i have to call in and do all this bill again going on it that that applies it's with a, the man right so from what i can see here it doesn't look like this company participates in an annual savings increase where the company would automatically do it a change if they did companies will send out a notice along with an opt-out window but from what I'm able to see thus far, I'm not seeing where this company participates in any programs like that. So it does look like what you've put in will be the standard until you make the change. Perfect. Yeah, and Bill has already said that they don't go above 4%. So on their side, they'll never up it. Yeah. And, and so, this, so you make the decision to have it increase. It doesn't look like it would increase. Perfect. So it will stay at 4-4. Uh, I have to make that. Here it is. I think I just found it. Okay. Let's see. There's an annual increase of 2% up to 16% if you don't opt out or make an election during the window. Exactly. It looks like the window opens December first and closes December 31st of each year. Okay. So in that time frame, you would either log in or call in to us to make sure that we make no changes and opt you out of that savings adjustment. Perfect. And I'm kind of nipping that in the butt with this. Correct? So for right now, uh, so for right now, you're all set, but in December, like December 1st, you would want to give us a call so we make sure we keep you at the rate you're at. Well, no, no. I want to make sure. That's what I'm trying to do now is make sure that I don't have to call to confirm that it stays at 4. I want to lock it in at 4% on both of them and not change. That's not possible. You have to do the actual opt-out during that window. Okay. Because... I thought it was possible to lock it in at 4% so that it would never increase. No, it looks like they do have the annual increase program on here. So. And you can't take it off. Right, can't be taken off. There was one that you automatically set up for yourself. This is an employer directed one. So we made sure the one that you set up for yourself we discussed is not being activated. But the employer set up one, the one that Pella has created, that one is in effect, and the way to turn it off is every year, December 1st through 31st, you have to call in to just opt out of the program real quick and make sure it doesn't increase. Um, so if I set it to 0%, will it automatically have that opt-out option? If you were to set to 0%, it would increase you to 2% unless you opted out. Okay, by this information, what you're telling me is no matter what, got to call in every December and deal with this. Unless you're at a combined rate of 16% contribution, correct. But Pell is never going to go to 16. They're staying at 4. Correct. Their contribution match stays at 4%. But you can put in up to 16% yes. of your pay. I want, That's where it caps. I want to lock it in right now at 4%. So set it to the manual where I got to call in or I don't have to call in and not the automatic. I understand, I understand that. This is an automatic setup by the employer. We cannot turn it off. So the only <laughs> way to get it is every December you would need to call in and opt out. So what's that manual setting that you were referring to? That would be for one, there's one where you can have it automatically do it yourself. It's called the annual savings adjustment. We turned that off. This is the employer directed annual savings increase. We have no control over that outside of opting out when the window opens up. Okay, then the employer or the employee manual that one correct yes we have that set up so your account stays what it is until the employer one opens up in december and you need to turn it off each december for the employer one 
your employee one will stay at the rate it's at, but every year in December, you will need to call in and opt out of the employer increase to keep it at that same rate. The employer's never going to increase it. It's called an employer-directed annual savings increase. So Pella has an annual increase of 2% up to 16%. Mm -hmm. And if you don't opt out during that window, then it would increase. So even Unless, if I... Of course, you're already... Now, see, here... Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to play Mr. Fantastic here. I mean, you know your, your internal workings far better than I do. And right now, I'm, I'm like sitting there going, wow... Because I want to lock it in at 4% and not have to call in ever to prevent it from changing. The only way to prevent it from changing would be above the threshold that the employer has set, which is 16% contribution. Yeah. Anything below 16% contribution will require you to call it and opt out in December to prevent any increases. Yeah, see, I... And you're saying, and this is the part that is really jabbing me, is that even if we set it to 0%, so that it's not matching at all, because employer would match 0%, and just lock it at the rug. I mean, at the beginning of the call, lock it at the 4%, and I don't have to call in no December to stop NADA. But you know, with this information you're giving me, is that no matter what, even with the 4% Roth, which the employer will not match because it's pre-tax or post-tax, the only one that Pella is matching is the pre-tax contribution which does lower the taxes I'm gathering but seriously I don't want to have to call every single freaking year to prevent something from happening way the plan is set up, taking a look here, it says that the increase will be applied to the Roth. If you're putting in Roth, the increase will apply to pre-tax source if you're putting in pre-tax or any combination of Roth and pre-tax. As long as you are putting in between 8 and 14%, it would be increased by 2%. Once you reach the 16% total contributions going into the plan, then it would not apply. But elsewise, yes, you do have to call it in December to you. Okay. Do you have a supervisor? Yes, sir, I do have a supervisor. I, I do have to let you know this is from the plan. It's not something we can do. It's something that's been set up I, by the company. I, I get that. And um, I, I guess I'll speak with Pella about this tomorrow or today because i got to go back in today. But or I might even just pedal my happy butt over there now and kind of figure this thing out with them because but yeah let, let's get the supervisor on the phone now i don't want to <laughs> two year year off you know what i mean okay sir yeah if you'll give me just a moment here i'll get you somebody thank you
Investors awaiting Friday's data are still digesting yesterday's April job openings and labor turnover survey, or JOLT, that showed openings falling to their lowest level since February of 2021. And fresh labor market news this morning also indicated softness as payroll processor ADP reported private sector payrolls growth of 152,000 in May, well below April's downwardly revised 188,000 and beneath analysts' expectations for 175,000. While more jobs data lie ahead, Jolts arguably provides a little cushion for the Federal Reserve to say things appear to be moving in the right direction, meaning less inflation pressure. It doesn't necessarily mean a rate cut in June or July, but odds of a September rate cut reached 67% this morning, up from 47% a week ago, according to the CME FedWatch tool. This comes as Bloomberg's Economic Surprise Index, which measures the percentage difference between the actual economic data release and the median of analysts' forecasts, fell to its lowest level in five years, meaning data is coming in under analysts' expectations. That suggests investors might be hyper-focused on Friday's payrolls report to offer more clarity on current economic conditions and how the Fed may respond to the data. Futures based on the S&P 500 index rose 0.2% shortly before the close of overnight trading, while NASDAQ 100 futures climbed 0.5%. Futures based on the Dow Jones Industrial Average were up 0.2%. The 10-year U.S. Treasury yield fell one basis point to 4.32% and is just above the May low. The U.S. dollar index inched up to 10428 The SIBO Volatility Index, or VIX, eased to 12.94. WTI crude oil climbed 0.7% to $73.65 per barrel, still not far above four-month lows. And Bitcoin rose 0.5% to $70,776. This morning, slower than expected, ADP jobs growth data might be one reason Treasury yields slipped further. The ADP report doesn't usually correlate with non-farm payrolls data, so just because it was light doesn't necessarily mean investors should expect a light reading from the government on Friday. Looking more closely at ADP, manufacturing jobs fell by 20,000 and small businesses saw contraction. Annual pay rose 5% in line with the rise in April. Earlier, the weekly MBA Mortgage Applications Index fell 5.2% to a three-month low, another indication that high mortgage rates are slowing demand after a 5.7% drop the prior week. The May ISM Services PMI report at 10 a.m. Eastern Time is expected to show a headline of 50.7%, up from 49.4% in April, according to Briefing.com. Anything at 50% or above indicates expansion, and the April reading was the first contraction since December of 2022. The prices index of the report is likely to get a close look after jumping to 59.2% in April and raising concerns about inflation continuing in the services sector. The employment index could also be front and center, considering it comes just ahead of Friday's non-farm payrolls report. Also, check after the open for the latest U.S. PMI data from S&P Global for May. Overnight, services PMI data from China and Japan both exceeded analyst estimates, while the Eurozone's services PMI came in short of expectations. Weekly initial jobless claims bow early tomorrow. Analysts' consensus is 220,000 trading economic set, virtually unchanged from 219,000 the prior week. Watch for any climb in continuing claims, which give a sense of how difficult it is for laid-off workers to find new employment. Non-farm payrolls for May loom at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time Friday. Here is the current Wall Street consensus, according to Trading Economics. Non-farm payrolls... Hey, Mr. Cynthia, are you still there? Yeah. Hmm. Hey, um, thanks so much for holding. I've got my supervisor, Anthony, on the line. He's going to be able to assist you further here today, sir. Perfect. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. You have a happy Wednesday. You too, sir. All right. Thank you, Chris. And then, hi there, Mr. Vicente. Again, my name is Anthony. I'm a, I'm a supervisor with the 401k team here. 
Um, I understand that we were making some changes to your uh, your contribution rate into the plan, and um, you, you had a question about the um, uh, opting out for the annual increase, um, where it would automatically increase unless you opt out. Is, is that correct? Um, what I'm seeking to do is to opt out of the annual opt out by setting it now. I just, I started there on the 28th of last month. This is my second week of training. Mm -hmm. So, really, I'm not going to get a new calendar every year and remember to mark off for the Christmas season to check in with you guys and make sure that this thing's happening. I want to lock it in, whether it's 4% of the Roth only, 0% on the Pella match, or 4%, 4%. I had to, that's why I'm attempting to set it to one of these two and have it locked in. Got it, got it. Okay, perfect. Well, let me uh, let me take a, a closer look at the, the notes and the messages on the plan. Uh, kind of depends on how the employer chose to set up the plan as far as what options we have. Uh, let me see what options I can work out for you here. Um, I'll be back with you in just a moment, okay? Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Sure thing. Yeah, just a moment. Here is the morning Schwab market update for Wednesday, June 5th. Infotech shares rallied early Wednesday, giving major U.S. indexes a pre-market lift following earnings from CrowdStrike and Hewlett Packard Enterprise that appeared to ease growing concerns about demand in the sector. The mega caps built on yesterday's gains, but overall conviction could be muted ahead of Friday's Keystone non-farm payrolls report. Tech strength this morning doesn't mean economic growth concerns vanished overnight. Investors awaiting Friday's data are still digesting yesterday's April job openings and labor turnover survey, or JOLT, that showed openings falling to their lowest level since February of 2021. And fresh labor market news this morning also indicated softness, as payroll processor ADP reported private sector payrolls growth of 152,000 in May, well below April's downwardly revised 188,000 and beneath analysts' expectations for 175,000. While more jobs data lie ahead, JOLTS arguably provides a little cushion for the Federal Reserve to say things appear to be moving in the right direction, meaning less inflation pressure. It doesn't necessarily mean a rate cut in June or July, but odds of a September rate cut reached 67% this morning, up from 47% a week ago, according to the CME FedWatch tool. This comes as Bloomberg's Economic Surprise Index, which measures the percentage difference between the actual economic data release and the median of analysts' forecasts, fell to its lowest level in five years, meaning data is coming in under analysts' expectations. That suggests investors might be hyper-focused on Friday's payrolls report to offer more clarity on current economic conditions and how the Fed may respond to the data. Futures based on the S&P 500 index rose 0.2% shortly before the close of overnight trading, while NASDAQ 100 futures climbed 0.5%. Futures based on the Dow Jones Industrial Average were up 0.2%. The 10-year U.S. Treasury yield fell one basis point to 4.32% and is just above the May low. The U.S. dollar index inched up to 104.28%. The Siebel Volatility Index, or VIX, eased to 12.94. WTI crude oil climbed 0.7% to $73.65 per barrel, still not far above four-month lows. And Bitcoin rose 0.5% to $70,776. This morning's slower-than-expected ADP jobs growth data might be one reason Treasury yields slipped further. 
The ADP report doesn't usually correlate with non-farm payrolls data, so just because it was light doesn't necessarily mean investors should expect a light reading from the government on Friday. All right, thanks so much for waiting. You still with me there, sir? Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I looked over the uh, the plan a bit to see what options were permitted to, uh, or what actions were permitted to take. Um, so I do see the note here about the annual increase, obviously. Um, it, it set for them to increase 2% uh, automatically each year until you reach a maximum of 16%. And then, as you mentioned, and as you're aware, it, it, it does have the ability to opt out of that uh, starting in December 1st each year, between December 1st and December 31st. Uh, I took a look to see if we were able to kind of trick the system a little bit to like do the annual increase but set it to zero. Um, and it wouldn't allow me that ability. Um, so with the way that your employer set up the plan, um, the, the opt-out would be required each year, and there, there's not really a way around that. So, on the, I don't know, I'm, I'm just trying to, because, you know, who's issuing it, who's got the primary, when they've got this locked in, and I'm going to call it an opt-in. Because if we set it to 0%, then they'll match 0%. So there, there's the opt-out, you know, opt-out option, 0. Can't lock that in. But they can lock in an automatic participation annually. So if I opt in to opt-out, set it to zero and then from zero and and right now because i'm only two weeks into training I haven't even got the first pay stub yet so so really this account isn't even active yet he says it takes two to three weeks to go so that this december this christmas during the holiday you know, it's, it's, um, what, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, hectic. Uh, uh, the, there's so much that happens every holiday, especially Christmas, pre-planned. Got to remember that when you opt in to opt out and it's at zero percent, if you don't do that on the holiday season, it's gonna automatically jump to 2%. And if the following year, you don't opt in to opt out and get it back to zero, it will jump to 4%. The company will have matched 2% and it will match to 4%. And on the third year, it will exceed what the employer has locked in. They're able to lock it in on their side, but I got to yes. I got to remember to automatically even get it back to zero every single year. Am I seeing this clearly? You are. You are. So the way the employer built the plan, it, it's designed to keep you in contact with us. So it, you know you can reevaluate your contributions each right. year. Not a bad I, thing to check in. I am um, firm. Now you can make the change online yourself if you if you want to do that. That takes less than five minutes. Just, so if you want to, but see, you wanna I, I don't want to even year, have to be obli I don't want to be chained, obligated <laughs> when I should be. When it should be possible for anybody to, as the employers locked it in at four percent, you'll to lock it at zero. Because right now, lock in the four percent at the Roth and lock in the at zero. The standard I've got here a pre-tax, yeah. Standard pre-tax, that, that's the thing, is because it's 
lowering your tax. Which I, I don't see why some people wouldn't find that favorable. Oh yes, let me jump in at the six percent and bring bring that chunk of taxes down. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, it's a hundred. That removes the. It's a hundred percent taxable. I mean, I, I I'm kind of seeing the picture on that gameplay, but this little. I, I don't know how this system is set up to where basically. No. I don't want to have to jump into the web and deal with it annually. And the window is locked in December. So, I mean, how convenient is that? For whom? Yeah, let me do that. I, the first I definitely thing. hear where you're coming from there. Well, I mean, it's 2020. Is it 2024? It's not 2025 yet. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, this has been going on for a while, you know? I mean, <laughs> dang, put that in the Christmas yeah, stocking. No, freaking check in. Yeah, no, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from with the window being at a, a difficult time of year. Um, and if, if there's anything that I could do to make a change there, I, I, I definitely would. But with the way things are set up, then... It, you do have an understanding of, of the process that you'll that you'll take, um, and we're not able to, to edit that really. So I, now, I, um, is Pella able to, you know, uh, uh, would they have that ability to to unchain me from Charles Schwab on, on an annual check-in? Because they're the one that put this in place. So they, they built the plan with some of these rules um, in your best interest to try and make sure that you're contributing to your plan uh, and taking advantage of that benefit. Um, and so they, they built the plan with these rules in place. And so this, this is operating as, as they want. Yeah, now, exactly. you are able to opt out each year. It, it'll only take a few minutes of your time. And we're glad to help you with that if you need. But that, that is something that you'll have to do each year. Well, how is Pella opting in to lock it at 4%? They don't have the automatic increase on their side. They've locked it in at 4 So what is being actually matched here? Sure. So um, they, they would have their match set. Uh, it's, let me see. Oh, here, here's a question. Oh, hold on. Does Pella have to call in every December and keep theirs at four? Uh, no, sir. That it, they, they just they built the plan, and the plan operates the way that that it was set up. So they, they don't need to make that manual that manual change. Um, oh. They their match is put in place. Um, and then they'll have you contact us to confirm your elections each December. Um, did you have any other questions on the company match or anything else that I could help you with today? It sounds like you're understanding the process correctly. The match only affects the pretext, the standard pretext, not the Roth. Correct? Yeah, so the company match is going to be in pre-tax dollars. So any any match that is awarded would be in pre-tax dollars. All That's right. right. Lock in 0% of the standard pre-tax. Zero. 4% to the Roth, that is after tax. Right? Lock that in for me, please. Previously selected that you wanted 4% to the pre-tax and then 4% to the Roth, so you're nope. wanting to change that to nope. 0% nope. to nope. the pre-tax. If you and talk to Chris, yeah, and, and I, I so wish Chris had shared this information with you prior, but my initial was this, as I'm saying, 4% to the Roth, okay, that's, that's 0 not a, to the that's standard pre-tax. That, that's the original one. Then Chris shared a tidbit of information. Not a problem at all. Um, let me 
Yeah, let me let me go ahead and put that in place for you. So zero percent to the pre-tax, four percent to the Roth, and then you said you did want to opt out of the annual savings increase. So you don't want that to increase each year. Nope. Okay, I'll put that in place, and then in December you'll reach back out to us or make the change online to, uh, no. to confirm your elections. So that, that's where you're, you're kind of I, There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, well, There's then, nothing I can do about see, that, in, sir. in your, your phrasing, you made it quite clear that in that opting out of the annual increase locks it in. No, sir. You have an understanding of the way this operates. Um, would you like me to put the change in place that you just mentioned, the 0% to the pre-tax and 4% to the Roth? I can do that right With now. the lock-in to the annual increase. Lock it at zero, just four to the Roth. Okay. That's it. As I mentioned, I cannot lock it in in a way that you would not need to call us on December of this year. Um, but I, with that understanding, I can go ahead and put this in place. Would you like me to do that? I'm going to get a war dialer and program it to automatically call you every single day in December to confirm. Would you like me to put your preferences in place that you just mentioned, sir? And, and a, a notation on the account to every day in December, I will call to opt in, to opt out. Okay, um, you, you're welcome to call in as often as you'd like. Uh, and, you would only have to do it once. And that, I will that also, would more trouble most to you. certainly, possibly set up an automatic mail to send a paper notice of this every single day, beginning November, the last day of November, okay. you would receive we're getting the first a little letter off, in December. We're getting a little off, and then, we're getting a little off track, sir. And then I'm, I'm going to read through some I can easily Give me take just a, moment, please. a few seconds sir? and check the online to make sure that it stayed at that. Now, I do understand. Okay, I'm going to read through. Excuse uh, me. No, hold on. Wait, wait. I, no. Really? It will go much quicker. Because, I mean, I'm not trying to frustrate you, but <laughs> this established system is highly... Well, I'm, this. I'm just trying to help so you move can forward. you we're, we're kind of going also add a comment to my side of the account? To, to my side. No, I mean, because obviously it's not my account. It's your account and Pella's account. That is quite clear right now. But if you can add a comment that you can share with your corporation to anticipate this moving forward happening. Sure, I'll, I'll add some notes to your account here. Thank um, you. I'll go ahead and read through the disclosures that it takes to make those changes that you were wanting a moment ago. I'll do that now. You've elected to change your deferral rate in your salary deferral from 8% to 0%. This change will be communicated to your employer on June 10th. 2024 and typically takes one to two payroll cycles to go into effect and you've elected to change your deferral rate in your Roth from 0% to 4% this change will also be communicated to your employer June 10th 2024 and typically takes one to two payroll cycles to go into effect uh, are these changes correct for the Roth zero to the match Bella pre-tax standard so Pella's, Pella's match would be uh, would, would not be a, a part of this That's no gonna no continue, they're gonna they, uh, they are what they built. they're matching zero Pella will match zero percent uh, no sir no so it, since you're making four percent contributions they would be matching based on that four percent no so even that, even though it is wrong that's not what Chris Chris made it quite clear that Pella will not match the Roth. Chris made it clear that Pella will not match the Roth. 
Hezbollah is locked at zero percent to the Roth contributions. They are only matched to four on the standard pretext. That's it. That's what Chris made clear. Okay, let me let me check for that. I'm not seeing any mention of that behavior. Uh, it may have been a miscommunication. Uh, let me double check and see if there's anything like that on the plan. Thank uh, you, Supervisor. Just a moment. I appreciate it. Of course. I just want to get you taken care of as best we can with, with the ability that, that are in our control. Oh, that is fully comprehended, yes. And I appreciate it. And I'm trying to make it easy for you, too. I appreciate that. Not union, no. Okay, okay, just just wanted to confirm. Um, okay, now back to deferral. Company match. Yeah, um, this is not a company match. Discretion. Um, yeah, so let, let me let me clarify. Um, so if you're if you're contributing, um, if you're contributing to the pre-tax or the Roth, then uh, Pella will match 50% up to uh, a certain percentage. It looks like 8% is, is the maximum that they would match. Um, but by contributing 4% to the Roth, then they would be matching um, up to that 4%. Um, and what will come through for the match will be pre-tax dollars. But that would be eligible for match, which is which is really good news. Yeah, I, I, that that does that's basically what I believe I had with H and T, which was union CWA union, and, and I just had the matched four hundred one k Roth. Okay. All right, and uh, so since that you know we have some good news there, um, can I go ahead and and put that contribution change in place? Yep. Four percent okay. to the Roth. Zero percent to the pre-tax standard. Yes, yes. So just to confirm again, zero percent to the pre-tax, and then four percent to the Roth. Uh, this will be communicated on June tenth, twenty twenty-four. Typically takes one to two payroll cycles to go into effect. Uh, you've elected to opt out of the automatic savings adjustment program, and you will uh, need to call back in in December in order to opt out of that um, for the following year. Uh, are these changes correct? Um. Four uh, percent huh. to the Roth. Remembering that I can't make any changes with the way the automatic standard standard pretext. I mean, well, what I'm failing to grasp is how I am unable to lock it in. And, and, and that so that I I, under, I understand. I, I know, but that, that's just the way the employer built it. And, and I, you know, I get we, that. We understand I get that. that, and we can move. We can move on. We huh. can move on. Um, so do I have your permission to put these changes into effect? Yes Get it no? done. Get it done. Okay. Yes. Uh, we will send a confirmation letter the following business day with these changes. Perfect. Now, aside from this, um, was there anything else that I could assist you with today? Not at the moment, no. That this was all I... Okay. It's far more than I pretty much bargained for, but yeah. I'm going to jump in the shower, try well, to cool my head you. a bit. And go to Pella and sure, sure thing. ask these questions. Well, yeah. thank, well, thank you for your time, um, and I hope you have a good rest of your day there, okay? And enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day. You too, and many after for you, Tambien. Thank you. Hasta luego. For the participation. Okay. Oh. As long as you are putting in between or the X in stuff, how can we and deal with this?
Chelsea. I'm also hoping that your brother Emerson is doing quite well.